Hi, this is Will from Dance Gavin Dance, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Will Swan from Dance Gavin Dance. Hello. How are you? Really good, really good. Glad to be here. Yeah, we're super excited to have you. How's it feel to be back in Toronto tonight? It's great. Yeah, we love coming up here to Canada. It's rare for us too. I think we've only been up here maybe like four or five times yeah, in a few times. 13 years. So yeah, we should come up more often. If that's something you want to do. There's so many spots. I mean, you could only be so many places at once, right? Yeah, yeah. It can be hard to get over the border because you know we've had some problems in the past, and so yeah, it's it's a hassle, but it's worth it. Well, it's a super exciting time to be in the band as Artificial Selection is officially out, and I know how much work, time goes into creating a record, so for you, is it just pure relief that everybody can finally listen to it? It is, yeah, most definitely, especially because we hate choosing singles, because our records usually have a lot of styles on them, so mm -hmm. when you put out one song, everyone's like, oh, the whole record's going to be like this. It's like, <laughs> it's no, like, no, it's not, just wait. And you're known for always running kind of the genre gamut when it comes to different sounds. So when you're in the studio, is it kind of all over the place when you put your ideas together? Or does it actually come together fairly easily? Um, it, well, once we get to the studio, it's all there. Like, w we'd never go to the studio without having everything written before. Um, so, yeah, in movies and stuff, it seems like bands go to the studio with nothing, and then they play some riffs, like, oh, that's amazing. It's like, that's <laughs> not how it happens. Like, this was no. all written out. So, yeah, we never really write in the studio, ever. Mm -hmm. Well, I know for a lot of fans, it's like tweet after tweet, it feels like your whole feed is just fans being like, this record's absolutely incredible, it's blowing my mind. So, are you kind of agreeing with them on the sense where they're saying it is their, or your best record to date? Is that kind of how you're feeling? I think so, yeah. yeah it's my, our most technically nuts, like, guitar-wise, it's hard to play. And so, that's always, like, a good gauge for me. Just uh, if I did my job, if it's hard to play, then it's like, a all nice right, well, challenge. I'm, you know upgrading the riffs but yeah i think it's the best and i'm really happy it's out well one of the reasons that it is a bit harder to play is because there's some super super heavy tracks on the record so has that kind of come down to uh, your recent love of blood brothers getting into them a lot lately i do love the blood brothers um yes and also just other music like every time i have to sit down to write i try to like channel music that i love and try to listen to a bunch of full-length records by like thursday and blood brothers and then I'll also be searching, like, I'll go on Pitchfork and different music review sites. I won't read the reviews because yeah. a lot of times they're just really arrogant, but <laughs> I'll just listen to everything that gets reviewed and mm -hmm. kind of make up my own opinion. And that's how I find new music and new inspiration. Okay. That's really interesting. A lot of people use, like, Discovery on Spotify, but it's, like, reading other things. And Yeah, but I feel like that kind of, I don't know, this, I want to hear everything yeah. and then just make my own decisions. Well, there's a sick rec or song on the record called Son of Robot, and you actually just described it as one word, Blamskapow. Yes. So could you tell me a bit more about that word? Blamsk yeah, I was just trying to, because we wanted to come out the gates with just a crazy song that just slaps you in the face. So it I was just, does that. Yeah, and so I was just thinking like those old Batman noises from the 60s when he like hits somebody and it's like, bow. The font. Yeah, and that's kind of the reaction we wanted to get yeah. from people. I mean, without the pain. Without the pain. Yeah. Well, now you're bringing the record out on the road, as we mentioned here in Toronto today. And I have a couple of tweets that you've sent out while on the tour over the last six weeks that I'd love to hear a little bit more about. Okay. So the first one you sent out was, mashed potatoes can be your friends. Oh, wow, yes. I mean, that's very true. And we were listening to some really dumb music, and that was one of the lyrics. I, I can't remember what song. What yeah, so, like, I don't know. We, we listen to really bad music a lot of the times. And we watch bad TV. Like, we have a satellite TV in our bus, and we just... We'll watch the worst TV shows and movies, and then like an hour and a half into the movie, we'll look at each other like, "What? Who put this on?" Why it's like I didn't. I thought you put this on. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, we just watched this whole terrible movie. I don't even want to say any of the movies we've been watching because then we'll just get judged. TV? Nobody will want to listen to our music anymore. <laughs> What does classify as bad TV for you? What are some shows? Like reality TV, like um, The Bachelor, Bachelorette. We've been watching those weird dating shows where they go onto like the beaches and they have their oh, yeah. ex-boyfriends and girlfriends there, and <laughs> it's just trash television. Yeah. Sometimes though, you get hooked into those. I it? know. You always yeah. know why am I doing this, but you don't stop. Yeah, I, I hate good. those shows, but I know how addictive they are because mm -hmm. when I sit down to watch them, you get sucked in. Like it's. It's almost impossible, but I try to just avoid them so that I, like, have better influences. I don't want that to creep into the music, you know? Yeah. 
I can only imagine you the next song that you guys put out. It's about like reality TV show boyfriends and girlfriends on the Yeah, beaches. yeah, the deep dating song. You <laughs> new, know, new direction of dance, Gavin dance. Maybe, you know, maybe. <laughs> well, the other tweet that I have is they should make a Mario themed surgery game called Doogie Bowser. Oh yeah, I mean that would just be awesome. Right? Yeah, Doogie Howser is a badass. You mix him with Bowser, and you have a really cool property. I mean, how did that come to you? Uh, you're right. Probably marijuana, <laughs> lack of sleep, um, all, all like just losing my mind. The combination. All the, yeah, all of that mixed together. Okay. Well, I know when you guys first started out and you were looking for band names before actually deciding on dance, dance, Gavin, dance. You had a bunch of really random and silly ones. Like you even called them really dumb names in the past. Really bad. So what? What are some of those ones that were thrown around to begin with that didn't stick? We were almost called the Green Monroe. Really? Yeah, which would have just been horrible. <laughs> Like, we thought it was, like, the Green Hornet. Or at least I did. I was like, why are we going to name ourselves, like, a bad third-rate superhero? Third-rate superhero. And we almost were. But wow. Dance Gavin Dance, like, the name got brought up and the idea to change our name to Dance Gavin Dance instead of Green Monroe. Like, I think I was the catalyst well for done. that. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, because there's no way we would have been successful if we were the Green Monroe. <laughs> yeah, I'd be, like, a DJ or, for EDM right now or something, you know, wow. so. Whole yeah. other life, right? Yeah, I mean, there's probably infinite dimensions who knows you know what i'm doing in the other ones you're a fan of the air horns you would have to be if you went that route (sighs) you know i'm not really i think that's what's kept me from the edm world like solely the air horn i just don't (laughs) want to be around them well here on the site we not only interview musicians like yourself but also wrestlers so if you could have your in-ring gimmick or persona what would that be oh man i just went to like my first wrestling thing uh this year because my friend got me a ticket um i guess i would be the the guy who just in the middle of a fight just pulls a bong out of nowhere it's like whoa like where'd he get that (laughs) then he just does a big rip and then i jump on a guy like i don't know something along there i'll have to work on that so you use the artistry of distraction in your matches yes yeah for sure so distraction deprise something surprise sleight of hand (laughs) Kind of a mixture of all of those. Throw it all in it. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, it's got to be theater, you know. Totally. And if you were to keep this persona just for a moment and have some band play you down the ramp into the ring, which band do you think would kind of vibe off? Would you love to see do that? Um, well, I, I... Entrance music. I think it would be cool to do uh, Caro Caro Bonito. Yes. A great band. Yeah, they're really good. Um, just because nobody else has any music like that in wrestling, mm-hmm. so it'd be cool just to introduce a, Absolutely. Some, something different. Very cool. Well, just to wrap things up, I do want to leave it with all the fans because you guys have an insane fan base. Anything you want to say? Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, don't murder us because they try, you know. What? Explain that a little bit. Uh, they just get mean? a little crazy, you know. We have fans that stalk us, that follow us around, uh, that, um, you know, the the serial killer fan base, you know, mm-hmm. that, like, 0.5%. <laughs> we're just, we're afraid of them. You know, they got their weird glasses. They stare at us from across restaurants and stuff. We're like, huh. come say hi or just, or you just know, what's go. going on here? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the creeper fan, that's well, what I call them. Well, I'm glad it's only 0.5%. Yeah, yeah most people are awesome great lives. fans, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I'm. I understand because I'd be like a creeper fan for like you know David Bowie or something back in the day for sure. You know, just like oh shit, it's Bowie. <laughs> so I get it, but you know, on the other side of it, it's it's pretty awkward. Mm-hmm. How's it feel to be bo- like in that Bowie spotlight? You know, getting used to it. Still, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I I don't do enough. Uh, you know, I need to up the fashion game. I think. Yeah, get, like, somebody to start dressing me and start wearing crazy Elton John glasses. Like, yeah, I'll I'll definitely have a future evolution of myself that I haven't fully achieved yet. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, of course. And remember to everybody viewing, you visit us at alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. See ya.